Okay, so how high this ball goes from the surface of an asteroid being shot up. And so the idea here is we could attack this with our energy concept, conservation of energy. And so, yeah, start off really nice and simple. Uh, e before equals E after. And so from there, what we could do is we could say if this is our surface of our asteroid and it gets shot up and back down and this we could say is our after and when it's just being shot up that would be our before and we're interested in the height that it travels okay and so the e before equals e after and the conservation of energy sure it applies on the really nice simple stuff book on a table that we dealt with long ago and um, it also applies perfectly well to an asteroid and ball being shot up out in space um, we do have to adapt slightly um, the conservation of energy that's fundamental that will work e before equals e after okay check that will be fine uh, the kinetic energy, well, that's nice in general, one half mv squared. That will continue to uh, go along with us. The one thing that we do have to adapt for when we get out here is our potential energy. And when we're dealing with a uh, book on the table or lifting rocks or whatever, um, we quite often just said mgh, which specifically uh, gravitational potential energy. And this equation was great, nice and simple, um, and worked perfect for all those questions near the surface of the Earth. But we do have to stop and say, okay, think back, that g, 9.8 meters per second squared, was an approximation. And it only really applied near the surface of the Earth. So out in space on an asteroid, no, that G is useless to us. 9.8 meters per second square has no meaning out there. So uh, this equation is out. And so as we, we go back, conservation of energy, check, that will work fine. Uh, kinetic energy, check, as, perform, as before. Uh, potential energy, we have to adapt by changing to a more general potential energy formula. So let's get started. So just like anyone where we're throwing up a ball, it starts off with lots of kinetic energy. And we can put an I there, initial kinetic energy. And because we're not using the surface of the Earth as our reference equals zero, um, let's establish a baseline, the potential energy at the beginning. And as it goes up, all that kinetic energy disappears and the potential energy increases and we end up with a lot of potential energy at the end or at the final position. Okay, so there we go. There's our, our starting point. And so like we said, one half mv squared continues to be just perfectly fine in whatever situation. Um, we end up adapting for the fact that little g doesn't make sense out in space. So um, we're going to replace this potential energy with G M M over R initial. Uh, capital M will use to represent the mass of the asteroid. The little m will use to represent the mass of the ball. Um, our general G and um, the initial R. And so just to clarify, if we're looking at it on the asteroid, and here we are throwing this thing up, um, Ri is the distance from the center of the asteroid to uh, where we're standing on it and ready to throw it up. So that's where it starts off. Um, if we draw a little dotted thing on the side there, then the RF would be from the center out to where it ended up. And remember, R is from the center of the first mass to the center of the second mass. And so we have to go to the center of this asteroid to the center of the ball, which the ball being a lot smaller, we can just represent as the middle of the ball where the ball is. Okay, so um, potential energy final. Um, again, negative, we don't forget the negatives, M over and RF, and we already showed what that RF represents, the distance from the center of the asteroid to the center of the ball 
at its highest point. Okay, so there we go. We've got the conservation of energy broken down into a bit more detail. Um, we can rearrange things. Um, let's swap things around here. G M M over R F equals G M M over R I minus one half M V squared. Signs change as we switch things around. Uh, the masses or the mass of the ball can cancel out. And so uh, here we are. We can rearrange this uh, very fundamental way of changing this up. You could be fancier with your algebra and make this look a little tidier, but for now we're just kind of ends to a means, uh, laying out what we need to plug in some numbers and come up with a final answer here. And so, yeah, let's plug in some numbers. G is our constant, so we'll just leave it like that to plug in at the end. Um, now, we have the mass of the asteroid, so 5 times 10 to the 16 kilograms, so already in the units we want. Um, G, 5 times 10 to the 16, great. Now, Ri, so that, we look back, and the Ri would be the radius of the asteroid. So change that to meters, and then we have minus one half, and V was the initial velocity, <clears throat> excuse me, 20 meters per second, check, okay. So we plug all that in, we come up with, from our calculator, one, five, three, eight, zero meters. Okay, so, is that our final answer? Well, we take a look at it. That's our RF. So that's from the center of the asteroid to the center of the ball at its highest point. We're kind of asked how high the ball goes. So I would say that probably the best uh, interpretation of what we're supposed to give back is this height here, what we called H. And so if we look on our asteroid picture, I guess H is our difference between RF and RI. So if we were to take our RF, so H is equal to our RF, 380, minus our RI, which is simply the radius of the asteroid. And we subtract that and we come up with 7380 and for a final answer, let's look after sig figs here a bit. So 7.4, and we'll also put it back into kilometers. So there would be a final answer there for us. And um, yeah, again, um, just getting used to the idea of taking your very familiar conservation of energy concept and saying, yeah, it works all kinds of places, including out in space, with the slight adaptation, recognizing that out in space, our little g doesn't help, so we have to look at it as a change in potential energy using our general potential energy formula.